So what we're going to do now is give you a chance to practice. So here is a real section one listening. So we'll just follow through in the listening and you can check that and listen and follow the advice. We don't give you the 30 seconds um, note taking time. So if you do that right now, give yourself 30 seconds to look at these questions one to six. Questions one to six. You will hear a telephone conversation about studying abroad. You should answer the questions as you listen because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions one to six. Hello, admissions guidance. How can I help? Hello, I'd like some information about studying at your university. Can you help me? Yes, of course. What course are you interested in applying for? International business. I already have a first degree from a university in my country. Fine. So you'd want to do a master's level course? Yes, that's right. OK. We offer an MIB course. That's a 12-month full-time course. I can send you details of that course. Or you can download a PDF file from our website. Could you put it in the post, please? I don't have access to the internet at the moment. Could you tell me what qualifications I need for that course? Yes, for the MIB, you need a first degree. The minimum qualification is a 2-1 or a first. OK. And in English language, you need a score of 7 or above in IELTS. That's not a problem. I have a 9. That's fine. Could you tell me the course hours and the semester dates, please? Yes, there's a total of 10 hours of lectures, seminars and tutorials a week. And there's an extended stay abroad at the beginning of the second semester. That involves spending a month at the national head office of a multinational corporation. OK. And the semester dates are... Just a moment. OK, the first semester starts on the 27th of September and ends on the 22nd of January. And the second semester runs from the 7th of February to the 27th of May. Can you tell me a bit more about the actual course content? Well, I don't know much about the course personally. I'm an admissions officer, but I can read the course description for you if you like. If you need to know more about the academic side, you'll need to speak to the course tutor. Thanks. I'd be very grateful if you could tell me as much as possible now. I'll just read the main points. It involves the advanced study of international organisations, their management and their changing external context. Students develop their ability to apply knowledge and understanding of international business to complex issues, both systematically and creatively, to improve business practice. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Now, if you could give me your name and address, I'll have full details of postgraduate courses sent to you. OK. My name is Javid Iqbal. Now what they'll do once that section's finished, they'll say, OK, you have half a minute to now read questions 7 to 10. Unit 1, page 15. Listening. IELTS practice. Now listen and answer questions 7 to 10. OK, my name is Javed Iqbal. That's J-A-V-E-D-I-Q-B-A-L. Thank you. And your home address, Mr Iqbal? It's Aga Khan Road, Shalimar 5, Islamabad, Pakistan. Thank you. And could I ask you one or two more questions for our records? Yes, of course. What was your first degree in? I did economics. I got a first-class degree. And where did you study? At the university here in Islamabad. OK. Now, you said you had an IELTS level 9. Could I ask what your first language is? Actually, I'm bilingual in Urdu and English. Thank you very much. I'll put full details in the post today. Thank you. And thanks for all the information. Not at all, Mr Iqbal. Thank you for calling. And here are the answers. So notice that as the answers come up here, um, as we mentioned before with a word form, for example, with number three, make sure you've written hours and you had an S on that. It would be marked wrong without. 
Also, number six is similar to that too. Organizations. There's an S that needs to be there. If that S was not there, you'd be marked wrong. But also notice very carefully, and this is a good thing you should do when you transfer your answers or when you're checking, that it says they. They are managed their external context. So that tells you that that answer for number six must have been a plural. So the grammar and the, um, the word form you're seeing in the question can help you predict the type of answer. Um, again, number seven, it would have to be exactly right. All those letters would have to be spelled exactly right. Number nine is another example. It's economics, not economic. You'd be marked wrong. So that's an, an, an overview of the listening test.